But what I want to talk today, and then I'm going to voice over, because I've already set up my still life, but I'm going to voice over how I made the decisions that I did about setting up that still life. And I hope that that's helpful for you so that you'll start when you're sitting around tonight just to look around and say, huh, maybe, or what if, and you'll get some composition ideas. So let's get started. I wanted to show you what my little table looks like. You can see there's nothing fancy going on here and it's a not a very large space and part of that is done purposely because it means that I have to keep things smaller and brief. I'm going to bring the camera closer and now we're going to start to build the still life and let's see what happens. This is done in real time and halfway through I do put on an overhead light but I would never photograph something with an overhead light but it was getting darker and darker the longer I worked. All right so the first thing that I like to do is have, if possible, an off-white ground. So that's what that piece of paper is doing. And then I like to, if possible, again, create diagonal movement. And I'm going to do that with some origami paper. I happen to like these two colors. They seem to work really well. Uh, I don't want them very saturated because I want the um, emphasis to be on the subject that I'm working on. But you can see, I'm also thinking in my head that it's going to be a square, definitely going to be a square. Uh, so I'm, but I'm not at the camera lens, but I'm thinking that way. So I want to compress things. The other thing I want to do is create bridges. By bridges, what I mean is I want to create a place where already there's some bridges happening. One piece of origami paper is going over the other piece of origami paper. The cup in front is overlapping the vase behind. The reason for that vase is because it's going to be a strong vertical. And you can see that in the painting behind. I used it as a vertical. It's not going to end up looking like a vase. It's just going to look like a blue shape in the end. Now I'm checking to see what cup kind of resonates and looks the best to me for me. So I tried a variety of colors. And it seemed like, uh, in the end, that I felt like the orange really popped the best. And it makes sense that orange would pop the best because I have that blue piece of paper in front and then the other uh, blue element of the vase. And so those are opposites, you know, a complementary color. So that's going to work. That felt too harsh for me, that particular red. So I settled back on the orange cup, which I think was what I originally started with. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that that cup is not straight on like that. I want to turn it somehow because that's not the most interesting angle. And I think I'm going to do that in a minute. Let's see. I'm working. No, nope, not yet. Let's see what happens. Now, I, I'm very interested in these little miniature dogs that I have. I kind of like them as shapes, and I like how they also can be a little bit playful. I was trying to see if I could somehow incorporate them in a still life with the cup and with the vase. And in the end, I decide not to use the cup. Now, that's not so bad looking at it from right here. Again, I'm thinking of a square, and that's going to leave a really big hole in the upper right-hand side. Nothing much happening there. That's going to be a problem, but I'm not thinking about that right now. I, now I've gotten more interested in the dogs, and the cup seems like a major distraction, so I think I put the cup away. I think I decided that uh, that was not going to be interesting to me. Here I'm trying to find a element that would be horizontal that would play against that strong vertical. And it kind of does. I kind of like that right there. But again, it leaves a really big hole in the upper right hand side if it's going to be a square composition. That dog in the back is not part of the composition. And I'm starting to notice that it's there. But I keep plugging away, looking for bridges, seeing where I can find things that overlap. I want to make sure that uh, that I can see the dogs clearly. I don't want, if, if something was to overlap in value, in terms of being the same value, then I might lose the definition of the dog's face. So I got rid of that red box. I like the shape of the red box, but I was losing any kind of the value. In other words, how dark or light that box was, was the same as pretty much very similar to the dogs. So that wasn't going to work. Now I'm zeroing back in on the dogs because I like the idea of the dogs playing with a, a ball, a ball that would be way too big for them. That seems kind of humorous to me. And of course, it's that time of year where I like to play, uh, paint shiny things anyway. And I've got that, I still have that dog in the background. I've got to do something about that. And I'm conscious, again, of bridges. 
And there I use the power of three. Three things, there's always something about threes, fives, eights, odd numbers that can work really well. And I think I felt pretty good about this right now, but it was getting darker and darker and darker. So I think I'm gonna go and turn on the light. Then I thought about trying this dog, but you see how he disappears? Yeah, the value doesn't work there. So I put him, moved him over a little bit and he's still disappearing. And not only is he disappearing, but it's not gonna work for a square because it's, it's most of the composition is horizontal. And I realized that I thought, well, maybe if I move that other dog over, I can compensate and get back into a square. But I realized, nope. Okay, so I turned on the light, <laughs> but you gotta get serious here. Something's gotta work. I've eliminated the cup back to the orb. And then I thought, oh no, I really, really, really do like this tall blue thing. Even though that, tall, that blue thing is not gonna be a big part of the composition. It, I mean, it's not going to all be incorporated. I'm going to zero in. So I'm kind of, in the end, simplified. I've gone from um, more objects to fewer as time has gone on. There are only four objects in the still life now, and I'm not sure if I bring that other little dog back or not. Now I'm looking to make sure that I can identify everything that I've put in there. I have some nice overlaps happening. There's some movement from the forward to the back. There's diagonals. There's a lot I can do with what I have here. So I think that might be where I ended up. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think it is. So now I felt, I so strongly felt like there had to be something red in there. I don't know why, but I did. And so I have these candies that I will use. I might not stick them all in, but I just felt that need for uh, some some color element there. And I stagger them so that they're um, kind of walking to the right and I'm walking to the left. So it leads you into the composition. I really felt like I needed those stepping stones. Uh, M&Ms would have worked really well too. I, I just don't happen to have any M&Ms at the moment. These are Easter candies. There we go. Oh man, right where that happened, I thought, okay, I think I've got the square that I want to have, at least from the angle I was at. And so now I'm going to go and pick up the camera and show you some of the possibilities now that things are set up with how I would take a picture and decide what I'm going to paint. So let's look at some stills now. Here they are. This is looking directly down, and this would be the way I was working. I was looking down at this whole subject the whole time. I wasn't on eye level with it, but I don't want to paint it this way. But I wanted to show you that this is where I, this was my vantage point as you were watching me work. Ah, I like that. There's something about that that I really like, although that vase is maybe too much in the middle. But again, it's going to be a square. You're seeing it in a rectangle, and I'm going to make it into a square. But boy, I really do like that. There's overlapping. There's bridges. I like that even better. Good choice there. There's some real nice overlapping there. The only thing I don't like is that the dog's, the uh, black dog, his nose is just touching that ornament. I'm not sure that's okay. Maybe it is. Because if I pull it back, then there'll be tension in that space, and I don't want that. The next thing I come down is down to eye level, because what you can do with any composition is go down below where your subject is and go above where it is. I'm not sure I like this better. I think I, I want, I'm probably going to go back to the one that was before this. And now, once again, I'm going in and, and zeroing in. Is there anything I missed or something I like better? So that's the process. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, master value mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.